seven. Beard outside. This wins. Donchich goes over. Oh, What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. I hope you guys are doing well. If you end up enjoying this video, be free to give me a thumbs up and click that subscribe button for more content. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really greatly appreciate it and I appreciate all your support, especially the members. Thank you so much for being amazing and sticking with this channel. But anyway, I'm actually going to be talking about the adjustments the New York Knicks must make if they want to come out victorious versus the Atlanta Hawks. Of course, briefly summarizing the game, we fought our ass off. After being down 11 in the first quarter, definitely got off to a sloppy start offensively. No one could hit shots. I can kind of give them a pass and be like, it was jitters, but it was Trey Young's first um, playoff series as well. He's a young player. He's younger than Randall, but it's different for everyone at the end of the day. But we didn't execute when it came to 48 minutes of basketball. Julius Randle didn't play well. RJ Barrett started to get things better, um, started to get things going in the second half. Reggie Bullock struggled. He was 0 for 5 from downtown. Nerlens Noel, you could say he kind of had an ad game. I thought Taj Gibson played well. I thought Emmanuel Quickly played well. I thought Derrick Rose played well. Let's just say the bench was amazing. I thought Obi Toppin had some solid productivity as well out there on the court. But yes, we are going to be talking about some adjustments that have to be made if we if we want to beat the Atlanta Hawks tomorrow. It's kind of a long list as I'm going to be going down like these bullet points here. But thank you so much for clicking on this video and let's get right into it. As the first thing we're going to get into is Ben Shelford paying. I've had it. I've, I'm a New York Knicks fan. That means I'm going to be a fan of Alfred Payne until he does something stupid out there on the court. I never root for him to fail at all. But it's just so freaking frustrating watching him out there on the basketball court. Plain and simple. I get what he brings solid defensively. But lately, his defense has been overrated as crap. We know he does nothing offensively. When he goes to the hoop, there's literally no hesitation move in his arsenal. There's no ball fake. There's literally no energy. And we can't even say Derrick Rose is a spark anymore because he's pretty much our starter. Alfred Payne does not play starting minutes. He's literally out there five minutes. He craps the bed and we bring Derrick Rose in to be a security blanket. Alfred Payne has been absolute dog shit. And I just don't know what to say. At this point, you start a Derrick Rose. You still have Alec Burks coming off the bench. You still have Emmanuel Quickly. You still have Tosh Gibson. I know he doesn't really score the ball that much. I know Derrick Rose is better with the second unit. But you can't afford to get off to another slow start. This isn't the regular season. These games are way, way more valuable when it comes to the series here up against the Atlanta Hawks. And I get it. We need that spark. What if Alec Burks is off? Can you count on a rookie of Emmanuel quickly? Can you count on Obi? Can you count on Taj Gibson? But at the end of the day, Thibs already plays the starters a lot of minutes. Derrick Rose is going to get those huge, huge minutes off the bench. And Alec Burks can play off the ball as well. But I think this is a move that has to be made. We started off way too poorly offensively because at the end of the day, your point guard is your leader. He controls the flow of the game. He motivates the team. He literally is supposed to make the heads up key basketball play and Alfred Payne did not do that. So Alfred Payne should not be starting in the basketball game Wednesday at all. The next obvious thing here is make Trey Young feel uncomfortable. This was a main, main, main like X factor or just a huge point or just something you really had to execute when it came to the first game of this matchup. You had to set the tone and make Trey Young feel uncomfortable and let's just say whatever the game plan was did not work. I mentioned this in my preview video but yes we did not execute this when it came to game one. He was just like it looked like practice to him. It looked like it was his like like freaking a millionth playoff game out there he looked way too comfortable out there on the basketball court it looked like he was built to play in madison square garden he kind of is this flashy player that plays with a lot of confidence so i do think he is built to play in the garden but let's just say whatever our philosophy was whatever game plan was throw it out the window that did not work we need something else this dude was coming off screens just wide open layups he looked so comfortable throwing up perfect out leaps to clink capella but I'll say this, I actually thought Taj Gibson did do a very solid job rebounding the basketball. That was like the main thing I really had concerns with rebounding the ball. I'm not trying to like really carry on with the rebounding like department topic here. But we out rebounded the Hawks, which was insane to me. Credit to Taj Gibson there. But yes, we gotta make Trey Young feel uncomfortable, which really brings me to the next point. The pick and roll. Can we freaking stop the pick and roll? That has been a problem all season. No matter who is in the pick and roll, we can't stop this fundamental play of basketball. One of the most fundamental plays of basketball, we can't stop. 
but I gotta give credit to Trey Young. I gotta give credit to a Chris Paul. Those players run it like to perfection. They're so smooth coming off the screen. They're just absolutely amazing. They know when to put up that floater in the lane. They know when to go all the way. They know to know when to dish it down low if it's with a bounce pass with an alley oop. But yes, it literally looked like practice. I don't know if it's me because there is a lot of risk when it comes to this, leaving guys open outside on the perimeter or leaving a Capella open down low. I'm doubling him before the screen even comes because yes, they have three point shooters. DeAndre Hunter. He was kind of missing some open shots, but Bogdanovich, good shooter. Kevin Herter's kind of, eh, he's been inconsistent from downtown. But at the end of the day, I would I would pick an open three over a guaranteed layup every day. I know there's an opportunity they're going to knock down the three, but it's literally an easy point every single time. Every time. And if we're late there at the rim, most likely we're going to be fouling him because we know how he gets those foul calls. And even if like there's people open outside on the perimeter, there's a higher chance that we are going to get a steal if he feels rattled in the double team. If Frank is out there or whoever's out there at the point guard position, Derrick Rose, whoever, to really try to use their long arms or just create deflections because we know he's this undersized type of guard and we want to make him rattled. In conclusion for that point, yeah, we just can't allow dribble penetration in the paint. We can't allow Trey Young to just make it look like it was practice out there. It was absolutely pathetic. The next thing here is we can't allow these like turnover plays to happen. We can't have these big time turnovers that result in momentum for the Atlanta Hawks. It happened yesterday or it happened last night. It looked like we were about to close out the third quarter like absolute beast. And then Julius Randle turns over the ball two times and they finish out on like a 4-0 run or like 6-0 run. It was something disgusting like that. We were about to enter the fourth quarter like up five, up seven, and then there's just momentum shattering plays there. Like the momentum, it just all went away because of big time turnovers. We got to be smart with the basketball. We got to take care of the basketball. So yes, the next point is Julius Randle. What's Julius Randle really done in his NBA career? Turn over the basketball, specifically with the New York Knicks. And now talking about Julius Randle, I know he's our number one option, but he has to take smart shots. He has to let the game come to him. He has to stop taking these unnecessary fadeaways in certain situations. You gotta trust your teammates. And he did not do that in yesterday's game. But yes, you could say there were some jitters, but I want no more excuses after game one. But whatever the Hawks did, it was a good game plan to really make him feel rattled, really protect, protecting him from not going to the basket, really shutting him off nicely. But that's also something we're going to have to do up against a Trey Young. Shut him off, whoever we have out there at the point guard position, so we do not allow dribble penetration to get back into that last point. Obviously... It's obvious. Julius Randle is our star player. We need him to play good. RJ's 20 years old. Can you rely on him as the number one option? As much as I love Alec Burks and Derrick Rose, those guys come off the bench. You're going to need someone to be huge when it comes to the starting lineup. Because Reggie Bullock, next point, was non-existent. We have to hit our open three-point shots. Because we know at some point, the Hawks are going to hit their open three-point shots. They didn't do it at the beginning of the game, but Bogdanovich caught fire. It looked like we kept Bogdanovich in check, and all of a sudden, he flame throwing us from downtown. Bogdanovich is a second half player. He hits big shots. We got to do better of closing outside on the perimeter. But yes, Reggie Bullock, 0 for 5 from downtown, absolutely pathetic. Missing open shots. Julius Randle got some good looks, but he didn't knock them down. RJ Bear, wide open threes at the beginning of the game, didn't knock them down. We got to knock down our shots outside on the perimeter because that's not a good sign already to start the game. Julius Randle playing bad. Reggie Bullock, both of them playing bad offensively. RJ didn't have like the best of game in the world. Nerlens Noel doesn't produce much offensively. Alfred Payton, nothing. So you're pretty much getting no productivity from your starters. Our bench literally carried us last night. But Derek Rose, keep doing what you're doing. I have to give respect to Alec Burks. Keep doing what you're doing. Manuel Quickly, Obi Toppin, Taj Gibson. I hope you continue to rebound well when it comes to game two because you were absolutely electric with your deflections. And the Knicks really have to connect on all cylinders. Play every side of the basketball, like rebounding, shooting from downtown, defense, passing the rock, finishing well at the cup, hit open threes. Literally every part of the game, the mental part of the game, we have to execute. But thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys tuning in. And as always, guys, have a humble day or night. Peace out, y'all.